Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Haris Parvez, for inviting me to deliver a talk at uh, Lancaster University, United Kingdom. So the topic of my uh, today's talk is uh, about privacy preservation, billing, load monitoring for Internet of Things, uh, that is a smart meter. So this work uh, has been carried out uh, by my PhD student, Khatija Hafiz. And uh, the course supervisor of this work is Dr. Dona Osha. And basically, this is a technical work. Uh, and this work has been uh, accepted and published in IEEE International Conference on Communication, ICC uh, 2021, workshop on communication, computing, and networking in cyber physical systems. So uh, basically, in this uh, uh, talk, uh, I will first talk about uh, Internet of Things. And then I will explain how Internet of Things are uh, related with cyber physical systems and a smart grid. And then I will be uh, focusing more towards uh, a smart metering infrastructure and uh, privacy preservation and billing and load monitoring for the, uh, for the smart meters. So when we talk about Internet of Things, uh, uh, Internet of Things is basically comprises of things that have unique identities and are connected to the Internet. So the scope of IoT is not limited to just uh, connecting things like devices, appliances, machines to the internet, uh, but uh, Internet of Things basically allows these things to communicate and exchange data, control and information. And a processing of these data will provide us various applications uh, towards a common user or machine goal. So as you can see over here, uh, this is basically uh, a smart home. Uh, this is smart home has uh, different appliances uh, such as a refrigerator, microwave, oven, uh, lights, uh, smart TV, uh, garage door, exterior lighting, interior lighting, uh, laptops, and all the all these things are basically connected uh, in a uniquely manner uh, with the internet. And one can access uh, the the data generated from these appliances and devices. Uh, and uh, can get some insightful information out of these. So uh, in Internet of Things is basically, in Internet of Things, you are uh, trying to connect each and every uh, electronic appliance to the internet. And then you will apply uh, machine learning algorithms and intelligent techniques uh, to get some insightful data and to use uh, this information uh, uh, for other benef uh, beneficial applications. So Internet of Things uh, uh, can be uh, used uh, in the form of a smart meter. Uh, for example, these, is, uh, these is smart homes have uh, one of the unique, uh, you know, monitor, uh, which is a smart meter. These smart meters can be, uh, can be implemented by utility companies. So these smart meters uh, will be capable of uh, monitoring your uh, all the uh, electrical energy consumption and they provide this information back to the utility. So uh, Internet of uh, Things uh, basically, as I mentioned, uh, also contains smart meters and these smart meters are the integral part of a smart grid. So what is a smart grid? A smart, uh, a smart grid is basically an intelligent grid. As you can uh, see over here, we have uh, uh, electric power consumers. These power consumers can be uh, homes, electric vehicles, and these uh, electric power consumers have uh, their uh, uh, solar power uh, solar power panels uh, uh, located on their uh, rooftops or uh, or other renewable energy resources, and they they can inject back uh, their energy uh, to the to the power grid. So when you look at the smart grid, uh, the smart grid is basically an advanced form of the electrical grid. And in this smart grid, you basically try to integrate information and communication technologies uh, to the traditional power grid to make it more efficient. And uh, in, a, in, a, in a smart grid, you have uh, tra traditional power generation resources such as thermal power plant or nuclear power plant. And then you have the electric power transmission system which transport uh, electrical energy uh, from, uh, from very far distances. And then you have the electric power distribution system, which is uh, located near to the 
to the consumer. And in between, you have the control room, which try to uh, you know, integrate all these components of the smart grid. One of the unique feature of a smart grid is that uh, it provides bi-directional power and information flow. For example, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the incorporation of a smart grid, the electric power consumers can provide real-time information uh, to the electrical uh, utility companies and electrical utility companies can then uh, you know, uh, perform demand, uh, demand response strategies and other billing and other information. Now, uh, how the smart grid is different from uh, traditional electrical grid? So basically, uh, in traditional uh, power grid, uh, uh, we have electromechanical, uh, you know, organization. Uh, the, elect uh, the traditional power grid is based on electromechanical components, while the smart grid will be uh, completely digital. In traditional power grid, uh, we have unidirectional communication while in smart grid, we have bi-directional communication. In traditional power grid, only the, uh, the, uh, the, the utility companies uh, can uh, provide information to the consumer. The consumer cannot provide feedback to the, uh, to the utility company. But this, the, the case is different in the context of smart grid. In a smart grid, we have bi-directional communication. Uh, now the uh, users the smart grid users can uh, provide inject back this information not only injecting back the information but also uh, can in back, uh, inject back the uh, the energy as well to the grid uh, traditional power grid is basically uh, is blind in a sense that it cannot uh, uh, monitor itself while in a smart grid uh, we uh, we have self monitoring capability and self healing capability as well if there is some problem occurs in a traditional power grid, uh, we have to perform manual checks and test uh, where, the, uh, where, where the grid is uh, creating issues. However, in smart grid, uh, we can perform remote check and test. And there are a few sensors uh, available in the traditional power grid, while uh, that is not the case in, in the context of smart grid. In smart grid, we have large number of sensors. And uh, in a smart, uh, in a smart grid, we have large number of customer choices, uh, while in uh, traditional power grid, uh, the customer choices are very much limited. So here you can see, uh, uh, this is the vision of the smart grid, uh, showing the vision of the smart grid. And it shows, it shows that uh, the smart grid is to bring together the existing electrical infrastructure and the computer uh, and communication networks uh, that we have been calling by various names of for years, automation, SCADA, monitoring system, uh, DCS. So uh, the, in the smart grid, we have, we have uh, both uh, the communication system and electrical power grid system, uh, they are uh, combining uh, uh, together. And uh, when they are combining together, uh, it gives us uh, real time simulation wide area reliability, uh, network optimization, customer participation, uh, participation in the energy markets. Uh, so basically in a, in a smart grid, uh, uh, in a smart grid, uh, the core thing is a smart grid communication network. So uh, smart grid uh, communication network provides, uh, you know, uh, customers the ability to communicate information to the utilities and other uh, other stakeholders, uh, and the uh, the key to achieving these potential benefits of smart grid is basically uh, to build up an efficient smart grid communication network uh, that can support all identified smart grid functionalities such as advanced metering infrastructure, demand response, uh, electric vehicles, wide area situational awareness distributed energy resources and storage and distribution of, uh, of grid management. Now, this is another diagram uh, showing the smart grid communication network. So uh, as you can see uh, in, in, on the top, you have the power system layer. The power system layer has uh, typical uh, components of the power system, power generation. And power generation can be in any form. As you can see over here, it can be from non-renewable energy resources, from wind energy, from solar, solar energy. 
Then you have the power transmission grid. The power that is being generated by the power generation units will be communicated uh, to very large and long distances. Then you have the power distribution grid. So the grid stations that are uh, located near to the uh, consumers. And, and then you have the power consumption uh, units such as smart homes, electric vehicles, or uh, and, and these can be uh, also integrated with microgrid. In the top, yeah, in, uh, in the top, you, you have seen the power system layer, and in the bottom, there is a communication layer. Now, in this communication layer, as you can see, you have uh, a control center, which is uh, uh, basically uh, using wired uh, backhaul network. Then you have the wide area network for uh, data aggregation uh, and uh, looking the infrastructure of the power transmission grid. Then you have the neighbor, uh, neighbor area network, NAN, and then you have uh, home area network and uh, in which uh, the different devices uh, are connected within the smart home. Now, this is uh, just uh, a conceptual reference, uh, re reference model of NIST a smart grid framework. And, uh, and this is basically uh, provide uh, uh, a conceptual, ref conceptual reference model of a smart grid and the actors, connections, and network shown here are uh, intended to be uh, typical examples that can be used for discussion. Uh, and uh, if you want to uh, get some more details, you can look at the, uh, the NIST uh, smart grid framework uh, in detail. So here you can see uh, you have a service providers, you have operations team, you have markets, you have bulk generation, transmission, uh, along with distribution and the customers. Now, just to give you an uh, idea how things are working. So this uh, example is uh, basically providing uh, you how uh, the messages and standards are, uh, are being used in, in the NIST, uh, NIST framework for smart grid for demand response. So here you, uh, you can see uh, there's a customer. The customer uh, has a, is, uh, is equipped with a smart meter and the customer enroll itself with the service provider. Uh, service provider then inform this uh, to the operations team and, and the customer is registered uh, and uh, is being uh, monitored, uh, monitored through the demand response component of the operations teams. Then, uh, you know, uh, they, they get some information about, the, about uh, any change of price in the units, electrical energy units from the markets and this is being inject, uh, injected uh, to the demands and uh, demand response component of the operations team. Then uh, the, op, uh, the distribution operations team announced the price event uh, to the metering system, uh, which is then uh, communicated uh, uh, to, uh, to the distribution network. And this is known as uh, price event distribution. And then this uh, price event, event distribution is communicated to the customer uh, through the smart meter. Uh, the uh, customer, when known, uh, when knows about local price event, they uh, they they can reduce their electrical energy usage, and uh, then uh, this usage, uh, decrease usage, is reported back uh, to the uh, to the distribution network to the operations team, and the operation team then. Uh, uh, in, uh, calculate the billing information, and then billing information is then communicate uh, uh, to the customers uh, via a service provider. So you can see this is basically a typical uh, demand response example where uh, the customer is being informed about a market price uh, a decrease of the electrical energy unit. Uh, and you can see there are different algorithms used at different uh, segments of the, of the whole smart grid. So these are few of the components that are being, uh, uh, protocols that are being used at every, uh, every segment of the smart grid. So this is how a customer uh, can get a real time uh, awareness about a decrease or increase in the, uh, in the unit of the electrical energy and then they can adjust their uh, electrical energy usage and then get some benefit in terms of uh, reduced billing uh, uh, as a customer. 
So and this 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 is uh, uh, not possible in traditional power grid. This is only possible in a smart grid uh, because a smart grid has this capability of bi-directional communication and uh, gathering all this fine grain information. So uh, this is how uh, uh, you know demand response is managed uh, in a typical smart grid. Now, actually, uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we are focusing on a smart grid. So a smart grid basically have uh, different entities. Uh, you have the power grid, uh, which is responsible for generating the power. You have the smart meters. So smart meters are located uh, at every home and these home can also be known as smart homes. And then you have the third party aggregator, uh, which are responsible for gathering information from these smart meters or smart homes. Now these smart meters, when they are located in a smart home, they, uh, they calculate uh, and uh, record very, uh, very, uh, you know, fine grain in energy consumption of all the appliances and devices within a smart home. So a smart meter basically collects uh, energy consumption data in each uh, smart home. And then uh, every smart meter in, in a smart home uh, provides this information uh, to the aggregator. And, and the aggregator uh, then perform, perform some analysis uh, on the collected data and then uh, provide this information to the power grid. Power grid then then perform some, uh, you know, uh, some operations on the data for cal uh, for calculation of billing and uh, any other analysis. So uh, uh, smart, smart meters basically perform granular reporting of smart meter readings. So, for example, the total uh, uh, the total uh, load in an area at any instant T load monitoring can be done and demand response can be carried out. And one can also uh, calculate the total energy consumed uh, in a time period T. So you, you can see smart meter is basically communicating uh, uh, in, uh, the, the energy consumed uh, every 10 meter, uh, minutes. And this information is uh, provided to the aggregator or to the utility. Uh, uh, then the aggregator basically uh, calculates the total energy consumed in a time period. So here uh, you can see an example where you have uh, different uh, houses, three houses in this example. Each house has uh, a certain uh, energy consumption in, in terms of kilowatt. Uh, and then uh, if you want to check, uh, you can check uh, for against each house how much uh, in the total energy has been consumed and you can then calculate the bill. Similarly, if you want to calculate the load in the area, for example, here you have three houses, house one, house two, and house three uh, indicated in, in, in the rows. You can uh, calculate the total load uh, at any instant uh, T of all these uh, houses. So this is how uh, basically uh, the load monitoring and uh, uh, billing Occur. So in the rows, you can calculate the total load uh, in an area and in the columns, uh, you can uh, calculate the billing of a particular uh, house. Now, uh, basically, the, pro that, and the problem that we are dealing here, uh, let's say you are in a smart home and you have the smart meter and you have different appliances. Now, uh, consider uh, yourself uh, sitting in your home watching TV and it's a nice weekend night, your clothes are in, in the washing machine, uh, the dirty dishes from the dinner are in the dishwasher. You have no uh, idea how your daily, uh, daily routine is being monitored by just looking at your energy consumption data. Yes, uh, uh, this is non-threatening energy data, uh, but it can be used uh, to infer sensitive information about your lifestyle and daily routine uh, so much uh, so that an adversary can tell when you go to sleep or when you wake up, when or how often you do laundry or more threatening information like when you are at home or not. And uh, this is basically uh, due to the uh, result of frequent reporting of uh, energy consumption data to the power grid. So uh, on the one side, uh, it, this is smart meter is uh, gathering information from all your appliances and providing that information to the aggregator. But as you can see, on the other hand, 
uh, that information, collecting that information and communicating that information uh, may be harmful uh, to the consumers. So the question arises, why power grids uh, needs, uh, need this detailed data? So uh, with the progress in technology, uh, power grids uh, have evolved to be better at meeting highly increasing demand for energy. And this new power grid system or smart grid enables the two-way communication between power grids and consumers. And this exchange of information helps basically service providers uh, in devising demand response policies uh, to influence consumers' energy demand from peak time to off-peak time. And energy consumption data is also used to provide services like accurate billing and load monitoring. Even though uh, reporting energy data has brought a lot of benefits for the consumers and power companies alike, uh, it comes with uh, consumers' privacy implication. As, as I have been mentioning over here, that if that if your if your information about lifestyle behavior change uh, uh, it can be leaked, uh, it may uh, it may open uh, some new threats uh, and 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 uh, and the adversaries can and get uh, your uh, routine information. So the, uh, the goal here is basically to preserve privacy of individual user profiles. We, we don't want to stop uh, to collect this data, but we want that this collected data can be provided to the utility in a way that we preserve the privacy of the individual users. And uh, besides that, we want to calculate the total energy consumption of individuals from a billing time period T and calculate the total energy consumption of all users in an area at any instant T uh, for load monitoring. Now, uh, here you can see, uh, when we look at the literature, uh, uh, there are some already works carried out in the literature. Uh, uh, so they, they consider uh, two different architectures uh, with trusted third party and without trusted third party. So with uh, trusted third party, there are some uh, works carried out uh, which uh, uh, among which uh, DRDP is uh, one of the strategy uh, that is uh, uh, that is basically adding noise to the aggregated data before sending to the power grid. Uh, the advantages of this scheme is that uh, user privacy uh, can be achieved from the power grid and accurate load monitoring and billing uh, can be carried out by the aggregator. But you know, uh, there is no privacy from aggregator and inaccuracy at power grid uh, data calculation is also possible. And there is too much trust on uh, third party aggregator. And there is one, uh, there, there are three other works uh, also carried out, uh, which, uh, which considered without trusted third party aggregator. And they have, uh, uh, they, uh, they have in, uh, inaccuracy in billing and load monitoring and uh, these schemes are uh, computational uh, complex as well. So basically uh, we are trying to uh, conserve uh, or preserve uh, the privacy of the users. And uh, we, uh, we also want to calculate the uh, accurate billing. And for that, uh, we use the concept of uh, differential privacy. So differential privacy is uh, not new, uh, a lot of people uh, have been using differential privacy. So basically in differential privacy, uh, we try to add noise uh, uh, in, a, in an intelligent manner uh, so that uh, we, we can uh, anonymize the data. Uh, uh, and uh, if the data uh, get revealed, uh, the, the adversary cannot uh, uh, infer the actual uh, data, the real data. So, uh, so, so, we, so we, we use differential privacy. Uh, so how this scheme works. So basically uh, uh, we, we call our scheme DPNCT, a differentially private noise cancellation scheme for load monitoring and billing for smart meters. So first a smart meter generates a differentially private noise and add, uh, add this noise uh, to the real reading. So here you can see, for example, uh, here in this table, we have house one. So house one has some, uh, let's say consumption. So here we are adding a noise N11 to this house. And then uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, noise uh, is also communicated to the selected smart meter. And uh, we can send the mass reading to the aggregator. Uh, 
uh, now uh, when we have uh, uh, sent the aggregated noise to the aggregator the aggregator subtract uh, all the aggregated noise from the aggregated mass data uh, and then noise is added in uh, time interval uh, uh, delta t1 uh, uh, gets subtracted in the next delta t2 so here you can see uh, the aggregated noise and the load monitoring uh, uh, against each uh, house and against uh, uh, each time slot so uh, this is how uh, we are adding noise in a controlled uh, manner uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, energy consumption data now more precisely uh, if you look at over here uh, we have uh, smart meters uh, and these smart meters are connected to the aggregators so here on the very left hand side you can see these smart homes n1 n2 n3 and each of these smart meters are grouped uh, in, in in a group so on the top you have group number one on the bottom you have group number two and uh, each group have uh, an aggregator each group have an, uh, a master smart meter and then this master smart meter is connected to the aggregator so how 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 the things are happening so basically uh, you have uh, you have uh, first uh, uh, smart uh, smart meters that are uh, uh, observing the energy consumption this energy consumption uh, uh, basically uh, is being monitored by each uh, each smart meter then you basically uh, uh, provide uh, this information and noise uh, to the uh, to the aggregator uh, the aggregator basically aggregates uh, the noise uh, and uh, uh basically cancel from the individual smart meters uh, and then uh, this uh, is being uh, uh, once it is being uh, uh, subtracted the the bill is calculated for each smart meter uh, the, and uh, you have the the uh, the report errors in the bill which is then communicated to the utility grid and uh, with the billing information and uh, you also provide uh, the differentially private data uh, to the utility so basically uh, you you are what what you are doing is that you are uh, adding noise uh, to the uh, to the energy consumption of the user user data and you provide uh, that aggregated noise as well as the mass data you send this mass data to the utility uh, so that if the if the information is being le uh, leaked it can uh, it cannot be uh, revealed the actual energy consumption and then uh, at the end you are basically uh, subtracting uh, the mass data uh, the noise uh, from the from the mass data to cal uh, to calculate the accurate billing and the accurate billing information is then communicated to the smart meter users who then charge the accurate billing and we have uh, performed uh, some experiments so we considered uh, total households of 200 uh, we uh, calculate uh, the data every 10 minutes and we use numpy python library for that and uh, we uh, we basically uh, consider uh, different uh, time schemes hourly daily and weekly and here you can see uh, uh, first we try to check uh, the privacy and whether our scheme is uh, uh, preserving the privacy of the user data or not so here you can see uh, we compare our dpnct uh, technique with the results of drdp strategy uh, used on the daily profile of a randomly chosen single user uh, so here in this graph the solid black line denotes original real time data and the dotted uh, blue line uh, shows protected data by drdp and the dotted uh, red line depicts uh, dpnct protected data so you can see uh, the masking effect of noise added by dpnct technique has close to none correlation with the real time uh, data profile and this low correlation uh, depicted uh, in this figure means that an adversary cannot infer a user behavior or lifestyle patterns 
uh, thus we are ensuring the privacy of user data patterns generated without the underlying assumption of a trusted third party aggregator so for example uh, just to be more precise here let's say uh, if you can see uh, the black solid line let's say the energy consumption uh, at this time instant of this particular user uh, is basically let's say 200 uh, watt hour uh, but uh, you can see the red line uh, the re red line over here shows you 4000 or 3000 energy uh, consumption so if if that data that is being communicated to the utility is uh, revealed uh, uh, to the uh, to the adversary they cannot infer the actual energy consumption uh, of the of the of this user so this is how uh, the privacy of the uh, consumers is being achieved by adding noise uh, to the real time energy consumption data now here, uh, uh, here in this uh, uh, figure, we are uh, showing you the uh, the result in terms of billing. So basically, when we added noise uh, to the energy consumption data, uh, normally we can say that when we add positive noise or negative noise, uh, you know, uh, either we are charging more to the consumer or we are charging less to the consumer. But the consumer. Uh, uh, why should the consumer be penalized uh, and why should the utility com uh, companies be penalized in terms of charging less less billing okay so in order to do that uh, our scheme basically uh, subtracted uh, the aggregated noise from uh, for calculate the billing and these graph uh, clearly shows uh, that we are ac ac accurately calculating the billing of the smart uh, energy users according to their actual energy consum uh, energy consumption so basically, uh, we compare uh, different noise cancellation pre, uh, schemes, uh, for example, hourly scheme, daily scheme, and weekly scheme. As you can see in the bottom, you have hourly scheme, you have daily scheme, and you have uh, weekly scheme. And uh, we calculate the mean absolute uh, error, MAE, uh, in total energy consumption, kilowatt hour of, uh, of uh, arbitrarily selected single household. So in this figure, uh, we also compare uh, compared the effect of different schemes on our dynamic billing scheme. Uh, so the MAE uh, in hourly noise cancellation scheme for total energy consumption was uh, lowest, uh, as you can see over here, uh, because of the least amount of noise left at the end of the billing period. For example, in uh, if you look at the hourly, uh, hourly, uh, uh, hourly noise canceling scheme, if a total noise NT1 of seven kilowatt hour is added uh, is added in the hour 12 one, uh, uh, then the cancelling noise of exact same amount that is seven kilowatt hour is subtracted in the next hour one and two uh, one to two. So the M MAE uh, mean absolute error at the end of billing period for hourly noise cancellation scheme was the lowest, uh, because the bill only has small error added due to the addition of noise in the last hour of last day of the billing period and uh, the mae in total energy consumption of daily and weekly schemes are uh, uh, 0 02 and 0 05 respectively uh, so as you can see uh, the error in bill is reported to the aggregator and it's get corrected in the next billing period the customer sees no impact in terms of billing given the operation of the uh, dpc nt algorithm so this is how uh, our scheme uh, ensures uh, the accurate uh, billing uh, and also at the same time uh, preserve uh, the privacy uh, the, pr uh, the privacy of the user so uh, basically uh, all smart meters uh, the best um, for the load monitoring uh, the best case scenario is all smart meters send aggregated noise of group and zero percent error in total load at any instant of time and in the uh, worst case scenario no smart uh, uh, no master smart meters send aggregated noise and we have error in total load at any and at an instant t. So as plan of our future work, uh, we, uh, we we will focus on analyzing different attacks on DP, uh, DP and CT, different privacy attack. And we may also uh, uh, look at improving the master uh, smart meter selection scheme as well. So these are a few of the references that we uh, use uh, throughout this presentation. So thank you very much for listening to this talk. Uh, so uh, here I just uh, want to conclude my talk. So here in this work, we presented a privacy preserving scheme uh, for 
for preserving the privacy of uh, smart meet uh, smart metering users uh, while uh, calculating accurate uh, billing information and uh, i want to thank uh, the phd student uh, khadija hafiz who who carried out uh, this work uh, uh, for uh, for the completion of her phd and this uh, this is a joint work and her uh, uh, and her co supervisor is dr donaosha so thank you very much uh, for listening uh, to this talk